Okay, so welcome to the Crane's Kicklitch tutorial. I'm making this tutorial today because it's recently been rediscovered, kind of, that Crane's Kicklitch is actually pretty darn consistent when you do it with reaction time. I believe that more runners could be doing this in their runs, and I kind of want to just disseminate all the information about the skip so you can make a decision about it, and you can get kind of consistent at Crane's Kick Glitch. So maybe if you're behind, you want to go for it. If you want to start implementing it in all your runs, that's another option, but I just want to get the information out there. So this tutorial will be broken up into a few parts. The first part will be a brief tutorial about how to get to Crane's Kick Glitch consistently. The second part will be going over how to do Crane's Kick Glitch with reaction time. The third part of the tutorial will be some tips from top runners about how to get Crane's Kick Glitch without reaction time. And lastly, I'll just be putting up a comparison so you can see how much time Crane's Kick Glitch saves overall. But first, before we do any of that, I do want to give you some essential information about how to best practice Crane's Kick Glitch. So the main thing you're going to want is that speedometer that you see in the bottom right corner of my screen, and I'll put a link to that in the description. The second thing you're going to want is the proper binds. So as you can see, I just respawned and now there's a helicopter shooting at me. Luckily there is a bind that can kill that helicopter. I have it bound to the K button. So you're going to want that bind. I'll put that in the description. And you're also going to want a bind that restarts the level. But the reason you're going to want this bind is because in order to get reaction time back and to practice the skip with reaction time, the fastest way is just going to be to, to restart the level and then to teleport over to the skip. Okay, so now we can jump into the first part of the tutorial. Okay, so getting over to Crane's Kick Glitch. I recommend if you want to go fast, you can kind of do a weak wall boost and then get a Kick Glitch off this pole. Jump over here. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a kick glitch on this part of the, I don't know, cylinder thing. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's like this little part of the wall right here you can wall run on, and you really can't wall run anywhere else. Um, kind of? I don't know, it's weird. If you want to get the proper angle, though, you're going to want to hit it sort of at this angle, jump, turn your camera in to get the wall run, and then kick. It looks like this in fast motion. And then getting that grab is fine. It's really hard to get a faster grab. And then voila, you're in position. So if you find that version of getting to Crane's Kick Glitch finicky, here's an easier way. Just jump down here and roll. Then you can fast vault this fence. I recommend a wall boost here and then a Kick Glitch on this wall. You can jump up here and then just do a wall run coil jump over and voila, you're in the same position. So I'd recommend doing whatever's comfortable. Obviously the first method of kick glitching on this thing is a little bit faster, but at the end of the day, consistency is what's important. So the next part of this video is going over Crane's kick glitch with reaction time. This is the meat of the video. This is the most important thing. I do believe the skip is much, much more consistent with reaction time. I would even go as far as to say that with practice, the skip could be up to 90%, if not 95% consistent. I would say that with reaction time, Crane's Kick Glitch is probably easier than 3A to 3C and easier than Cannoli. So as a baseline, here's what it looks like to do the skip with reaction time. Okay, so let's break down the skip a bit. The first part of the skip is two side jump boosts. This side jump boost is probably one of the hardest parts of the skip because you want to get yourself a good angle. I'll explain what exactly a good angle entails later in the video, but what you're going to want to know is that starting a little bit far back and giving yourself time to line the angle up before you do your jump is probably a good idea. It's also probably a good idea to start your first side jump as far to the left as you can. Obviously you don't want to be teetering on the edge, it's not that extreme, but give yourself some wiggle room to do both the side jumps. So after you do those two side jump boosts, you're going to want to do a coil jump. It really does have to be a coil jump. For some reason, if you do a regular jump, you're much more likely to not keep full speed on this run-up. Another option for the run-up, something that Walrus popularized when he was doing Crane's Kick Glitch attempts, is to do a regular jump, land on this thing, and then just hold W the whole time. And that works for some people. I, I recommend coil jumping. I think it's easier because you can just kind of land wherever. Tip number two is you want to hit reaction time after you land and take a step. So let me show you what that looks like. I hit reaction time here. However, if I hit reaction time in midair, watch what my speed does in the speedometer. I land at 23.7, whereas full running speed is about 25.6. 
So that's really the gold standard you're looking for with running speed, is somewhere in the mid to high 25s. So therefore, make sure you land as far back as possible on this building, so that way you give yourself time to hit reaction time, let the game fully decelerate time before you hit Crane's Kick Glitch. Which also ties into my last tip, make sure you do those side jump boosts far back so you can line yourself up and jump early onto the second building. I think the next two hard things are where to aim and when to jump. So let's go over where to aim. Here's really what the run-up should look like. As you should be running forward here, it's almost like, I don't know how to describe this other than, it's almost like you're trying to wall run on the wall that starts here. Mirror's Edge is a wacky game, and for some reason you can start your wall run a little bit past the wall. So you can start a wall run almost right here, and you'll still get the wall run. And that brings me to the jump. So I actually jump before I hit this ledge. I think a big misconception with Crane's Kick Glitch is that you get the Crane's Kick Glitch because you pop up onto this ledge the same frame that you start a wall run. And that's something I believed too, and that is really not the case. You almost have to imagine that you're gliding off of this ledge. You're jumping before you hit the ledge. I know some people like to use um, this back corner going off screen or something like that. You can try to come up with a visual cue. Uh, for me, at least, I kind of just feel it out. It's pretty lenient, so I really think you have the opportunity to do that. I also just keep a rough idea in my head of when I think I'm approaching this ledge, and then I make sure to jump before I hit the ledge. With that in mind, I'm going to show you another clip of me doing the Crane's Kick Glitch so you can get a feel for when to jump and where to look. Another thing you're going to want to do is yank your camera. By pulling my camera right, I'm just ensuring that I don't just jump past this like an idiot. I actually ensure I get the wall run, and then this ledge pop-up, as long as I jump at the right time, will give me the speedy. To help you get the timing for the jump down, here's a clip of me jumping early. And here's a clip of me jumping late. If this happens to you, and you just jump past the wall, it means that when you're lining this up, you're not close enough to this wall. So you're just jumping past it because you can't even trigger a wall run. And the same thing if this happens to you. So if you're getting that wall climb, that is just a cue for you to adjust your angle and make sure your distance from this wall is adjusted on your next attempt. The other thing to note is how spookily long you can delay your kick when you do Crane's Kick Glitch. Watch this clip. Do you see how long I just delayed my kick? It's disgusting. It's also worth noting that on that clip, I kind of got a thing where my camera zonked out. That doesn't always happen in Crane's Kick Glitch. It just depends on the angle you approach. I typically get my camera to go behind me because I jump kind of far away from the wall. I yank my camera right, and then the camera does this weird wonky thing. If you approach at a shallower angle, that won't always happen to you. For example, here's a clip of Crane's Kick Glitch where the camera doesn't do anything wonky, but I still get it. Another pro tip, if you have speedometer open, you have a good idea if you're going to get Crane's Kick Glitch if your Kick Glitch hits 46 km per hour. If you're not getting a 46 km per hour Kick Glitch, it could mean that your run-up isn't fast enough, which of course could mean that you're hitting reaction time too early, or it could mean that you're getting some shaky camera work up into the kick glitch, and that's making you lose speed before you even kick. If you get a 38 km per hour kick glitch, that probably means that you jumped at the wrong time, so you didn't get the speedy at all. If you're getting 46 km per hour kick glitches, but you're not getting the skip, it probably means you're not delaying the kick enough. You need to delay the kick to get that little bit of extra distance in order to make the skip work. Here's an example of me not delaying the kick, and therefore not getting Crane's kick glitch. Something you'll also notice is that I free scroll in order to get the kick glitch during reaction time. It's not necessary to do that. I'm just a wuss and I have a free scroll mouse. You can definitely time that scroll during reaction time. It'll just take some practice. Okay, so now we're going to jump into part three of the video, Crane's kick glitch without reaction time. This part of the video is going to be a lot more brief because I have a lot less tips that are helpful. I think it's worth noting that a lot of the tips I gave you for how to do cranes with reaction time also apply to doing it without. However, here are some specific tips from top runners about what they do when they're trying to get cranes without reaction time and mistakes they generally see people make. 
And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some clips from any percent runs and chapter runs of people getting Crane's kick glitch without reaction times. Here's the comparison layout. Using reaction time adds on 5 seconds real time, so we'll add that on to the appropriate clips at the end. So I'm going to use this dead space during the comparison to also mention that although I didn't say it in the video, you should see that after Crane's kick glitch, everyone always goes and climbs up on the landing pad. Hitting the landing pad is what triggers the level to be able to end, so make sure you always touch that landing pad. And fun fact, once you touch that landing pad, there's a fixed amount of time before the level will end, so it doesn't actually matter how fast you get to the door, as long as you get there in like 5 to 10 seconds. Long story short, it's important that you climb up onto that landing pad as fast as possible to get the level to end as fast as possible. Thanks for staying to the end, and thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you want individualized help on trying to get Crane's kick glitch, then what you should do is join our Discord. There will be a link to that in the description. Take a video of yourself doing Crane's kick glitch. Post that video on YouTube. Send a link to us in Discord. Me and a couple of the runners would be happy to look at your attempt and try to coach you individually on what you're doing wrong to try to get you to get that skip consistently. Or if that's not working, just PM me. I'm happy to look at clips. Okay, thanks again for watching. This is the year of the cranes. Make it happen.